Mmm. This is really good. Kimchi, love me some kimchi. Hello and welcome to my brand new YouTube series. My name is Nicola and I have been running the travel vlog Poda Passport for the past nine years. Oh my goodness, has it really been that long? I have been very hesitant to get onto YouTube. I've dabbled a little bit here and there. I have decided I'm finally gonna take the dive into long form video content. And I am so excited for this new series that I have for you guys. Each week I'm gonna choose one country and together we're gonna explore what people from that country typically eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner. But to do this, I am gonna need your help. At the end of this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how you can get involved with this video series. Now, to choose which country to focus on for this episode, I went on Google and found a random country generator. And that is why today we're gonna to be exploring it. South Korean cuisine. I put a call out on my Instagram for locals or people who are very experienced with Korean cuisine to get in touch so that they could help me with exactly what to include in this video. So I've had some wonderful people send me some incredible suggestions. We're gonna go through what the average Korean eats in a day. Kicking things off, of course, with breakfast. One of the most interesting things that I've learned from my followers, breakfast, lunch, and dinner all typically follow the same structure. We'll have a soup, a bowl of rice, and banchan. These are the side dishes, which are arguably the most important important part of a meal in Korea. I was told by one of my Korean followers is while traditionally a Korean breakfast would probably follow this of set menu, these days things are a little different. A lot of people will have more of a grab and go kind of breakfast. This might be a pastry and an iced Americano or something else that is very popular is street toast. I was intrigued by this because I've seen quite a few videos before about Korean street toast. I kind of always wanted to try and make it. So my day is kicking off with Korean street toast for breakfast. Welcome to the kitchen where all the chaos happens. So I have got out my ingredients to make my Korean street toast. I am using a recipe by Mang Chi as I've heard she is one of the most kind of reputable Korean food bloggers. There's obviously a lot of different variations. I have seen many people making it, adding both cheese and ham. Today, I'm gonna go for the more simplified version, but you know, you do you. Just starting off prepping my vegetables as everything needs to be very thinly sliced and in a bowl, we're adding cabbage, onion, carrot, and spring onion. Then I'm just mixing together everything with my hands to soften it up a little bit, adding in some salt, and then cracking in an egg, and mix that together to form a very loose omelette-like mixture. This recipe calls everything to be fried in butter, which I have no complaints about, because uh, the more butter, the better, I say. Guys, it's now time for the terrifying part. Flip this, it's not gonna go well. Guys, that flip did not go as badly as I thought it was gonna go. Now the recipe's calling for me to fry the bread in butter and I strongly approve of this. Let's layer this thing up. All right, there is my toasted bread, topping that with the veggie omelet and onto the sauces and flip. I made such a mess with this. I'm topping mine with ketchup and mayo. Mustard is probably more traditional, but I'm not the biggest mustard fan, so uh, don't come at me. Secret ingredient of Korean street toast is a sprinkle of sugar, and I am a little bit skeptical, but I'm gonna trust the process here. I'm not gonna lie, this looks pretty damn good. Got my Korean street toast ready to go for breakfast, and I've also got an iced Americano. One of my followers told me that these are extremely popular in Korea, and they call them ahas. I'm not sure why. If you have any insight into that, I would love to know. All right, time for the moment of truth. Let's try this street toast. This is really good. This is a lot better than I expected it to be. I was almost worried it was gonna be a bit dry, but I really went hard on the sauces. Also, if you're worried about the sugar, it really isn't too sweet. It balances out really nicely. Do I have it on my face? Probably. 
I am back in the kitchen ready to make a traditional Korean lunch. As I was telling you guys before, the most traditional meal format in Korea will be a soup, rice, and banchan, which are your side dishes. So that is the format I'm gonna follow for this lunch meal. There are a lot of different popular Korean soups, so it was hard to choose one. The one that most people recommended to me was the fermented soybean paste stew. I'm gonna leave the name on the screen because I am so terrible with pronunciation. So that is made using this paste. Also, we're just gonna do some steamed rice and for the banchan, I'm gonna do a spicy cucumber salad. I have cheated. I have bought some ready-made kimchi rather than making my own. Maybe that will be the next project to do. And also some little uh, like toasted seaweed. Once again, the recipes I am using for the stew and the spicy cucumber come from Mangchi and I will link them all in the description in case you want to try making any of these recipes for yourself. Okay, I'm starting off by putting potato, onion, zucchini, chili, garlic, and some shrimp into my pot and covering all that with water. Confession time, you're meant to use dried anchovies to make like the stock of the stew, but I really couldn't find them anywhere. So I'm gonna substitute for some fish sauce and I know that's probably not what you're meant to do. If anyone has suggestions for any better substitutions, let me know, but I figured, I mean, this is made of anchovies, so. Hopefully it'll give a similar-ish flavor. Now that that started boiling, I'm adding in the soybean paste and it very much looks and smells like miso. So I really like miso. I'm hoping I'm gonna like this. Final step is putting in the tofu, leaving that to simmer for a few more minutes and I think we are ready to serve up. Admittedly, I'm not the biggest stew fan in the world, but I feel like this one's gonna have some good flavor to it. To quickly recap, I've got my steamed rice, kimchi, toasted seaweed, spicy cucumber salad, and a fermented soybean stew. This lunch has been a labor of love, but I am so excited to get stuck in. Let's first try this soup. Mmm. It has got such a depth of flavor to it. It's very similar in flavor to a kind of miso soup, but with a lot more punch to it. I like this. It's, it's really nice. I love having all these little bits to try, but I never know sort of how to approach it all. all right, let's try the spicy cucumber salad. It's so slippery. I swear I can use chopsticks. Mmm, yummy. I'm... Wondering how I meant to kind of go about the rice, like, do I eat it separately? Do I eat it with the stew? Again, let me know in the comments what I'm doing right and wrong. Kimchi, love me some kimchi. Mm. Mm. I love these little seaweed things so much. Overall, I think this is a really great concept for a meal and it is very nutritious when you look at it. Don't know whether I would be able to go to the effort of preparing this, especially for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but this was actually really fun to make. I did, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm gonna keep eating. I will see you guys at dinner time. After doing a lot of cooking today, I decided we would come out for dinner at Kimchi Restaurant at King's Cross to try some more Korean dishes. I'm so excited. Let's go. We are starting off our meal with some soju, which is a typical Korean spirit. It tends to come in fruity flavors, and this one literally tasted like a grape lolly, but like a very alcoholic grape lolly. First dish we are trying is the bulgogi, which is like thin slices of beef that have been marinated and grilled. Love that this comes with lettuce wraps because it adds like a nice level of freshness, and that spicy sauce really brought the whole thing together. Next, we're trying the bibimbap. This is basically a bowl of rice that's topped with various veggies, kimchi, and then protein, like egg, meat, or in this case, tofu. This one came with gochujang, which is a Korean chili paste. It's like the perfect balance of spicy, savory, and sweet. My favorite elements of Korean cuisine. This is probably the dish I was most excited to try. It's called daboki. It's rice and fish cakes in this thick spicy sauce. The rice cakes are super chewy and I wasn't sure about them at first but the more I ate the more addictive this dish became. The final savory dish we ordered was the bossam which are boiled pork wraps. Like the bulgogi it came with lettuce to wrap up the meat 
I guess like also served with a few different side dishes, spicy radish salad, muli, and of course, some chili sauce. I love how the side dishes in Korean cuisine are not just an afterthought, like they really are what brings a lot of flavor and interest to the overall meal. For dessert, we've got the pad bing su. So this is a popular Korean shaved ice dessert. I mean, I enjoyed the fruit and the sweet red bean and the ice cream, but the shaved ice part was literally flavorless. I don't know, maybe I need to try this on a hot summer's day and not in the middle of the winter in London. That brings me to the end of the day of eating some seriously delicious Korean food. Obviously, I have just scratched the surface of Korean cuisine and there's so many dishes that I just didn't have time to explore in this video. But this gave me a really great taste for Korean cuisine and I hope it did the same for you. Thank you so much to everyone who sent information through to me. It really, really helped when creating this video and figuring out what dishes to feature. Now I need to tell you what is going to happen before the next video I post. I want you to leave a comment about which cuisine you think I should explore next and whichever country gets the most comments is the one I will do for the next video. Follow me on Instagram at polka.passport as I will be announcing the next country over on there. Once I announce it, if you are from that country or you have a lot of knowledge about the cuisine, please, please, please help me out email through your suggestions of what dishes I should try, any information about the cuisine. So if you happen to know anywhere in London specifically that I can go and sample the cuisine, that would be such an amazing help. Thank you so much for watching. Is this a point where I say like and subscribe? I don't know. I'm still so new to this YouTube thing. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I can't wait for next week to deep dive into another country's cuisine.